I've heard many times the argument that Jim Cameron's Aliens is a great standalone film, but is not a very good sequel. I've heard it described as too Americanized on account of its gunko action and military mindset. And I've heard it described as being too different to the first movie in its pacing, mood and visual style. And yet still to this day, Aliens is widely considered an all-time classic sci-fi action masterpiece. When it was released in 1986, it was hugely popular. My friends and family and I watched it repeatedly, and a lot of people I knew had it pegged as their all-time favourite movie for a good year or so. Today, Alien and Aliens hold their respective places as iconic classic movies, but there's still an uneasy relationship between the two with a lot of people firmly siding with one movie as being superior to the other. The Alien opponent in the first movie had better visual design, that's one take on it, with Aliens having slightly altered and slightly less impressive design of the standard Alien Warrior, and that was a budgetary sacrifice of trying to get half a dozen Aliens on screen at once. And I agree with that criticism, But then the visual effects of the Queen Alien are marvellous, partially because it's not a straightforward one-man-in-a-suit affair. I've heard the equally valid view that the aliens in the sequel film physically move much more impressively. They're agile, whereas in the first movie the creature was rigid in movement. There's the view that the first movie was more claustrophobic, visually dark, organic-looking and menacing in the psychological horror sense. On the whole, I agree with that though Aliens definitely has some good slow-paced menacing stuff here and there as well. The first action scene doesn't occur until at least a third of the way through the movie, and the soldiers exploring and initially securing the barren base of the colonists is very atmospheric. None of that though for me reaches the atmospheric creepiness of the derelict alien ship being explored in the first movie. For me that's the best representation I've ever seen on film that the universe outside of Earth is likely to be incredibly hostile and literally alien to the presence of human beings. But then there's the view that the alien loses some of its power in the second half of the movie where it all just becomes a group of people hunted by a near invincible creature. But Aliens ramps up the tension in its second half and finishes with a thoroughly satisfying final act that's tense, explosive, and is driven by parental love so it has emotional power. All these views have strong merit, but for me it's a mistake to try and rate one movie over the other. In my view, they're two episodes of a single story, and Aliens as it is couldn't really exist effectively without the audience having prior knowledge of the events and atmospherics of the first film. The big difficulty seems to be that Jim Cameron has done something extremely unusual. He created a sequel that actually switches genre. Alien is a horror film, Aliens is an action film, and each of them have a sci-fi overlap. Of course, there is a fair bit of horror overlap as well, but essentially a leap between genres has been made. Audiences aren't used to this though, because most sequels stick to the genre of the original. For me, the decision to switch genres between these two movies was a genius stroke. Cameron kind of did the unthinkable, and from that springboard he created a classic movie of his own that both rivals the original and works incredibly well as a sequel. The standard approach to sequels is to repeat the contents of the original film, but try to spice it up a little bit. Usually it leads to failure, and even when the sequel is superior in itself, it lacks the feeling of freshness and originality that came with the first film. To be upheld as a true classic, the rehash sequel needs to be a massive improvement on the quality of the first movie. That is not an easy thing to achieve with Alien. The best sequels generally are those that treat the first movie as a first act and then take the story in a new and unexpected direction. Movies like Mad Max 2 The Road Warrior or Empire Strikes Back. When it comes to Aliens, that mission is accomplished on the basis of one thing, the character of Ellen Ripley. Instead of simply trying to create a scenario where another loose alien hunts people down one by one, which is what they did in the stupid third alien movie, Cameron pushed the alien character into the background and made Ellen Ripley the absolute centre of the story. His film basically tells the story of how Ripley overcomes her traumatised state of fear induced by the events of the first film. The visual style of Aliens may be brighter, more metallic, and more flashy and explosive, the pacing may be faster, but Ripley's journey between the two films flows smoothly. It really does feel like the same person journeying across these two movies. I've never heard anyone criticise the quality of how Ripley's character arc between these two films was acted and scripted. The psychological journey she goes through is seamless, it works brilliantly. 
And I think that's where the haters of Aliens are really missing the point. They consider the alien creature to be the centre of the first movie, but it's not. The human characters were the beating heart that made that film work. The alien was just a manifestation of their fears, and in turn the fears of the audience. To start a sequel movie with new characters, thus abandoning Ripley herself, would create an emotional disconnection between the two stories. Sure, a new, engaging protagonist could have been established, but why bother? Cameron's approach of using Ripley started from a position of strength and established personal history, so in my opinion Aliens is one of the most well-scripted sequels ever made. But what about that genre change? While the horror genre typically doesn't provide thoroughly satisfying resolutions, the final act usually involves a protagonist narrowly escaping something horrible, but with the threat remaining in the distance as the credits are about to roll. Cameron wanted Ripley to actually overcome what she feared rather than just narrowly escape it again, and so a genre switch to action makes perfect sense. Action movies tend to have more satisfying final acts because the emotional emphasis is on empowerment, not horror. A switch to mere straight drama wouldn't work because it wouldn't have as much emotional punch. The action genre is where the adrenaline surge of winning is at its finest, and to that effect Aliens doesn't begin as an action film, because to do that would be rejected by audiences, as it's too big a sudden shift from the end of the first movie. Instead it begins with similar emotional tones how the first film ended, Ripley in hypersleep, dark visuals, hypnotic music, and snail pacing. The film then comfortably moves into straight drama and then gradually transforms over the space of a good half hour into a horror action hybrid. Only in its final act does the action empowerment element take over. Actually, I consider the very title of the film to be a sort of deception. Instead of aliens, it should just be called Ellen, as in Ellen Ripley. Incidentally, another feature that the two movies share and which I've heard very little criticism of is the casting and acting. Alien was a formidable achievement in terms of how real its futuristic characters felt, even the secondary characters. Cameron achieves the same in Aliens, but instead of repeating the same types of characters, he switches to a different psychological breed of secondary characters, from miserable corporate slave miners to egotistical soldiers. It's extremely doubtful that soldiers this far in the future would be anything like the ones that we have now. They'd more likely be tech wizards in control of sophisticated machinery. But audiences were already familiar with gung-ho soldier mentality from straight war movies, and so those stereotypes are placed in Cameron's script and then played with in inventive ways, like Hudson being arrogantly confident and then turning out to be the most cowardly of the bunch. I mean, his character arc was so strong he could have had his own dedicated comedy movie. But these soldiers also provide an empowerment framework that Ripley draws upon to kick ass herself, and that's another piece of scriptwriting genius. I'll finish off this introduction though with a critique of my own. The visceral differences between the two films in terms of body horror are a weakness for me. Scott's film uses organic imagery and sounds to unsettle the viewer. It plays on unconscious fears of birth trauma from both the position of mother and child. And it plays on fears of rape and the unsettling mechanical aspects of human reproduction. These factors were very original in Alien and are as important to its success as anything else. Aliens only has minor allusions to these psychological qualities, though. I think it's a feature of the first film that Cameron either didn't quite appreciate or simply wasn't that interested in. For one thing, he switches the organic brown and grey colour palette of the first film to a dominance of blues and metallic shininess, with occasional strong splashes of red light. The big colour change is present in the very opening shot of Aliens. Blue is the dominant colour of this film, as it was in The Terminator and The Abyss. Though I suppose the blue here fits as an emotional punctuation that Ripley is effectively frozen in hypersleep, and her emotional journey starts from a place of, well, emotional coldness. The first Alien film was also thematically bleak, presenting a vision of humanity as a fragile, helpless biological accident in an uncompromisingly hostile universe. The film offered no other hope to the viewer than a symbolic retreat of the main character to the womb-like salvation of hypersleep at the end. As a horror film, that works perfectly well. I would have liked some of the bleakness to have been more prominent in the first half of Aliens, though. The moments where it is present are quite strong, such as a colonist being restrained by alien mush as a chest burster eats its way out of air. That, for me, is the film's scariest moment in the horror sense. And the effects of the little alien are better than in the first movie, I think they are anyway, 
uh, at least in terms of how the creature moves. And another great moment, one of my favourite scenes actually, is when Ripley and Newt are stalked by two facehuggers and nearly impregnated. Again, Cameron concentrates on getting some physical agility into the aliens which was missing in the first film. And the addition of agile movements absolutely plays here on any arachnophobia that the audience might have. I only wish that James Horner had um, accentuated the arachnophobic feel with a greater emphasis on creepy crawly elements in the music for the scene. Slightly missed opportunity there. So, in a nutshell, Alien was a story of psychological trauma, a first act. Aliens is a story of recovery and empowerment, a natural progression from the first act. In fact, to me, the entire movie Aliens is pretty much a kind of self-help lesson from the director about personal empowerment. But the details and sophistication of how Jim Cameron executed it are incredible and are on par, actually, with how expertly Ridley Scott created the fear element in the first movie. And so the rest of this analysis will break down the marvellous subtleties of Ellen Ripley's journey between the two films.